Hey, Walt here from StogieReview.com with another video cigar review, and uh, this this has the makings for a really good day. Uh, I work from home on Tuesdays, and generally my wife has work, so I'll stay home and I'll take care of my daughter while I'm trying to get stuff done on my computer. And generally, it, it turns uh, what would normally be a nine-hour day into at least a 16-hour day because I constantly have to stop and take care of my daughter or, or, you know, do other odds and ends around the house, and I can never really work straight on through the day. But today, my wife doesn't have work for whatever reason. She wasn't put on the schedule, and it's kind of a rare day off. So while she's spending time with my daughter right now, I'm down here. I've, I've worked a little bit this morning, feeling very productive, and uh, I thought it was about time to grab a cigar. So... I cracked, cracked open the cooler and I started rooting around in the in the loose bags that I've got kind of tossed in there. And uh, one of the ones I came across was the Nat Sherman 1930. Now, initially I wasn't, I was going to pass on it. And the only reason I was going to pass on it was because Mike recently did a review of the 1930. And I didn't want to have two back to back. I felt like he kind of snaked it from me. <laughs> but, uh... I just decided to go with it anyway. Um, I, Nat Sherman sent me three cigars a few weeks ago, and I smoked two of them in preparation for a review that I was going to do maybe a, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I was really into the cigar. I was enjoying it. And then when Mike posted his review, I kind of backed off and I set my last 1930 aside, thinking that in time I would kind of retouch on it. So today is the day. Even though it's really close to when Mike posted his review, I don't care. We're gonna do a, and we're gonna take another look at it. Uh, it never hurts to, to get a little short ashes opinion on uh, on another cigar. And generally, we like to spread them out a little bit further, but we're breaking all the rules and going back to the way we used to do things. So uh, enjoy. Well, as I said, Mike already did a review on the 1930. So if you're looking for uh, the significance of the cigar and the makeup of the cigar, you know, the tobacco is used and whatnot, you can check out uh, Mike's review for that. We're just going to gloss right over it and dive into, uh, you know, what I think of the cigar in general. Again, treating this like a short ashes review. If you want, you know, the full-blown thing, go to the full-blown review, which which Mike did. So, uh, Nat Sherman is, uh, is a cigar company that I've kind of been touch and go with over the years. Um, it was one of the first five packs that I ordered, not the 1930 of course, but uh, it was one of the, Nat Sherman was one of the first five packs I ordered when I started buying cigars years ago. I, I, and the only reason I bought them was because the, the sampler that I bought came with a free ashtray, and I, I think I still have that ashtray around here somewhere. But uh, those cigars, while they tasted great, the draw on them was super tight, and it kind of shied me away from the brand. You know, being new, being relatively new to cigars, and then having an experience with, you know, with five or ten or however many cigars I bought, bad ones, you know, it kind of shied me away from the brand. Eventually, I tried other offerings from Nat Sherman, um, but, you know, I've, I've always felt disconnected. You know, I'm not a New Yorker. I've only been to New York a handful of times. Uh, I don't have, you know, ties ties to New York. So when I see you know, names like Metropolitan and Banker and Tycoon, it just, I, I feel like there's a total disconnect there. I can't relate to the cigar, and it's kind of a turnoff. Now, some of the other products that I've had have been okay, no, nothing stellar, nothing nothing to bring me back. You know, I, I smoked those cigars, and they were okay, but I, I never felt compelled to pick up another Nat Sherman. That was until I, tried, until I smoked the Timeless. I'm, I'm really impressed with that cigar. I thought it was fantastic. And uh, and now, I received some samples of the 1930, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Was it going to be like the Timeless, where I really enjoyed it, or was it going to be like the older cigars that I tried that were so-so? In the case of the 1930, I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, it's kind of big and bold. It's got uh, some nice flavors. They're, they're sharp flavors, and by sharp, I don't mean aggressive. Um... You know, sometimes you you smoke a cigar, and the and the, the quality of smoke that it produces or the texture is is aggressive or rough or bitey. This one is different. Uh, it's got a sharpness to it without being aggressive, or without making you feel 
kind of beaten and battered. So the, the smoke's got a nice, again, not to sound like a broken record, a sharp quality about it without being overbearing. And again, you can see I've, I'm barely into this cigar, so we have, we have a long way to go yet. And, and the flavors seem bright. Uh, so uh, while I can't pick out any defined flavors this early on, it's off to a really good start. The draw is a little stiff, the smoke volume is a little light, but I think I can make it, I think I can work with it, I can make do. Uh, as far as the finish goes, it's, it's kind of neutral. It's not dry, but it's not creamy, and the body is somewhere in the medium range at this point. But uh, we've got, as I said, we've got a really long way to go. And uh, we'll touch back on the cigar when I come back. Well, I'm at about the halfway point on my Nat Sherman 1930. And I've got to say, it's, it's going really well. Um, I am impressed. I don't think it's quite as good as the Timeless. It's kind of early to be saying something like that, especially since uh, I've only had a grand total of three of these, and I've had a lot more of the Timeless. But uh, I think it's a fair assumption right now. The, the smoke texture is... It, it went from kind of neutral, where it wasn't creamy, but it wasn't dry, and it shifted over into the dry column. Now, generally, I have a, a distaste for dry cigars. It just does something to the dynamic, and it just makes for a less pleasant cigar. But in this case, I really think it works. It has uh, it has this drying quality where you you expel the smoke, and then you get this sort of parched feeling. And while that is less, you know, less than pleasant, immediately after that, you kind of get hit with uh, a blanket of flavors that work really well. You know, there's there's some sort of like citrus flavors in there. There's a, there's a heavy woody tone. There's a little bit of a spiciness. Retrohaling the smoke through the sinus is is fairly easy going. You would think with a cigar that's kind of dry, the 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 uh, the residual smoke or the the retrohaled smoke would be a little on the acrid side, but it, it, it just isn't. It's it's kind of soft, it works pretty well, a little bit of spiciness comes through the nose, a little bit of pepper comes through the nose. So I think that the, the flavor profile in the cigars is really interesting. There's a lot going on. There are soft and subtle flavors, they, they intermingle really well, and the dryness that I generally don't like just seems to just kind of pull it all together and it just it really works. In terms of body, it's about medium. Um, the flavor intensity is probably medium as well. Um, if it were much lighter, I would consider it mild to medium in terms of flavor intensity, but it, it's just, it's a good solid middle of the road cigar in terms of, of body and flavor. So it's, it's, it's firmly planted medium, both body and flavor. Um, the, the construction of the cigar is, is going really well too. The draw is a little stiff. The smoke volume is just a touch light, but it works. The smoke coats the palate and, and puts off good flavor and, and power. Um, I've got a couple of decent sized chunks of ash in the ashtray, so it's it's a well kept cigar. It's not making a mess. It's it's burning well. Uh, smoke volume is again it's a little light. The resting smoke is is kind of light. Um, it doesn't have an acrid aroma, you know, some cigars that where if you get that curl of smoke that just turns the wrong way and hits you in the face, it's enough to take your breath away. But in this case, it's kind of pleasant. It's It's got a nice aroma to it, and it seems to be burning nice and slow. I don't know how long I've been at this cigar, but it's been a good long while. Uh, and for a Robusto, it seems like it's smoking longer than the average Robusto. So maybe the stiff draw is from it having a bit more tobacco than typical, and that's also why it's burning a little slower. Whatever the reason, it does feel pretty firmly packed. But whatever the reason, it, it's just a winner. It's it's smoking well, it's performing well. It's a little on the pricey side at about nine twenty-five a single. Uh, I checked the JR price uh, just because I was trying to look up some of the other brands, and I know that I've bought other stuff from JR before. I knew they carried Nat Sherman. That's kind of why I turned there. But uh, it's a little steep at nine twenty-five especially for a Robusto, but, you know, I really think you're getting your money's worth out of it. If you're a medium-bodied cigar smoker, I think that uh, this will do really well for you. Well, we've talked enough about the cigar, so let's do 15 minutes on me, right? <laughs> That's kind of the way these videos have been going. So gather around, boys and girls. This has the potential to be a long one. So, 
Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Sunday, but before I get into what I was doing on Sunday, I want to flash back to my childhood years and years and years ago. Um, I, I, to be quite honest with you, I don't know when it started. I was definitely less than 10 years old, but uh, my family used to live directly around the corner from my grandparents on my father's side. We grew up in Philadelphia, and uh, whenever my mother was working or, or had something to do, when I come home from school, I would go around the corner, and I would go see my grandparents. My grandfather was retired when I was a kid. He retired early on. And uh, we would kind of hang out there. And one day, I was kind of sitting there playing on the Commodore 64, and uh, he started bringing stuff from down from upstairs. You know, these big, long cases, and, you know, he's kind of laying them out. He grabs another one out of the downstairs closet, and, and the next thing I know, he's got bows in my hand and I'm you know trying to pull different ones back you know recurves compounds and uh, you know I, I thought it was really cool we he grabbed one that fit me and off we went to the archery club and we spent uh, a few hours there I had a, a fantastic time and eventually we started going on a very regular basis the the club used to do uh, the, the club used to have uh, these volunteer work parties, and because my grandfather was, uh, I, I, he was on the board of some sort, and uh, he was what they called a working member, where he put in uh, a, a pretty high number of hours per calendar year, uh, you know, towards helping the club. And he would go very consistently. He would go up there for the work parties, and uh, when whenever we didn't have school or we didn't have anything going on, he would take me with him. And eventually, my brother also started going. My cousin started going. So it was uh, it was a good time for the kids to get together and go get out of the city and, and shoot bows and arrows. And it was, it was just a lot of fun. And over the years, I got pretty good at it. But eventually, my family moved away. We moved from Philadelphia out to Berks County, and it just became just a far too long commute to go from you know my parents' house to the archery club. Was my at the time, my grandparents still lived in Philadelphia. So that, that sort of fell away, and years went by. I had to be in my early 20s when I decided I wanted to get back into archery. So I went to the local sporting goods store. I bought a used bow that was probably 10 years old when I bought it, and uh, I started uh, going to another local archery club. Uh, it was kind of fun, you know, getting back into it. I even got my brother and my father to join, but uh, when... After about a year, year and a half, I decided I wanted to go back to school and t you know working all day and then taking night classes at night. There just wasn't enough time. I went to school for I think 27 months, and there was just a giant gap in between the, the first time I went to the archery club and you know when I could possibly go again. So I wound up letting my uh, my membership lapse, and things were just dead from there in terms of uh, how archery went. And it wasn't until about two years ago, I guess. I decided that uh, I wanted to get into hunting. I was It was something I've wanted to do since I was young, and I spent a great deal of time trying to track down family and friends that did it, and I found no one. <laughs> Amazing that uh, I lived in Berks County and I didn't know anyone that hunted. We're just, it, it's a very heavily, you know, it's, it's, hunting is a big thing here, but I just didn't know anyone. So eventually I wound up buying a bow on my own, uh, I started going to uh, a local archery club, which uh, I, I actually had a membership to because they're also a gun club, and I started shooting my bow again. Uh, I eventually started hopping around to different local clubs, and I met a guy that was running a program in Hamburg. So I started shooting there, getting more into archery. I wound up buying uh, uh, a better bow and getting more and more involved in the shooting. And I've been doing it pretty frequently ever since then, or as frequently as, as time allows between my, my pistol shooting schedule. But uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. I've been spending a fair bit of time shooting uh, field archery, which is, it's uh, bullseye. But you're shooting anywhere from, I think, as close as 18 feet out to 80 yard maximum. And uh, it's just, it's, the accuracy of the whole thing is just amazing. I, I just, I find that I really enjoy it, especially the longer stuff. You know, when you can fling an arrow out of a bow 80 yards and hit a circle that's, you know, yay big around, it's uh, it's really cool. And the first time you hit a five ring on an 80 yard target, which is about this big, it, it's just, uh, it, it hooks you. And I've been doing it as much as possible. When I was a kid, we used to do the same sort of field archery, but with, uh, with paper animal targets. And... Uh, 
it was 30 stations, four hours per station, so it was, it was, it was a long, a long match. These days, 3D is the big thing. They put out these foam replica animals in the woods, and it's supposed to simulate hunting situations. So you you know you walk through the woods, you shoot one arrow at these at these foam targets, and uh, you do that about 30 times for the for the given shoot. They'll you know they'll put out 30 of these animals. So I've been I've been doing a lot of that. It's it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy walking through the woods. If it's an easy course, it's not too rugged. I take my daughter along. She has this little little longbow. And she'll shoot a little bit before she gets tired or, you know, before she gets really picky about which animals she wants to shoot at. And, but it's been a lot of fun. Well, on Sunday, I got out and I shot uh, another 3D shoot at uh, Stowe Archers, which is in Stowe, Pennsylvania. And uh, I had a, a really good time. It was uh, just a great time in the woods. It was a little, a little hot, a little humid. I got mosquito bites all over me. But uh, even so, I, I really had a good time. Uh, Friday, I'll be shooting another another round of the field league which is four hours per station fourteen stations and then every week we we alternate between uh, hunter and field faces the uh... field faces are a white bullseye a black ring and then a white ring so it's five four three hunter faces on the other hand are a white ring a black four ring and a black three ring so when you're standing in the sun you say you're standing in the open at the the edge of a field and you've got the sun coming down in your face and you're looking back into the woods at this target tucked away in the in the sh in the shade all you can see is this little white dot which is where the target is and in this particular case I was shooting a 60 yard target so uh you know the sun's in my face my fiber fiber optic sight pins are blindingly bright I draw back and uh I start looking for the target. Finally, I see a white spot. And I, I get settled in, you know, I get a nice release, the arrow goes flying. I'm looking through the sight housing at the Sarrow track downfield, and uh, it looks like a perfect shot. You know, I'm really excited. I think it's going to do really well. And then I hear the, the familiar sound of arrow on dirt or arrow on, on rock, and the arrow kind of skips off. Here, it was so bright that I saw a sunny patch on the ground about eight feet in front of the target, and that's what I thought was the bullseye. So that's, uh, you know, hunter faces in bright light are devious little things to shoot at. So I've been having a lot of fun with archery. Uh, I'm trying to get my daughter more into it. As soon as my wife is done with schooling and uh, her schedule opens back up again, I'm going to try to get her into it as well. She seems not not really excited, but she she seems interested in the idea of getting out with me and my daughter and walking through the woods. So I think I think that's going to be a lot of fun, you know, as soon as the schedule frees up. And uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It's it's a it's a really good time. Well, I'm coming down the home stretch of my Nat Sherman 1930. I think I called it the 1903 in, in an earlier clip, but. Uh, we're coming down to the end, and I thought it was about time to wrap up the video and, and get this review finished up. So, in between uh, the last time we talked about the cigar and now, there's been a, a progression in uh, in flavor intensity and power. And uh, one of the less than appealing things that are going on is the dryness that I enjoyed so so much earlier on in the cigar is it's to the point now where it's right on the cusp of becoming acrid and I think part of that has to do with the cigar getting a bit warm on the fingers um, I think it's just it's heating up the tobacco and it's having some ill effects um, I think if I were to smoke it a little bit slower maybe that maybe that acridness would drop off a bit but uh, it's still smokable I'm still enjoying it but if it gets much worse I think I'm gonna call it quits a little bit early I just pop the band off uh, aside from that we're getting a pickup in, in flavor intensity. Uh, the body is picked up a little bit. It's still what I would designate as medium. It's not. Tra it, it hasn't transitioned into medium to full yet. It is uh, medium to medium to full in terms of the the flavor intensity goes. Um, again, it's a. Uh, it's still a little dry on the palate, but it just kind of works with the flavor profile. None of the flavors have changed. They're just a bit bolder, and they still kind of. They're still kind of playful. They bounce around, they intermingle, and you get one flavor that steps forward, and then the next puff it takes a step back, and you get enough another one that shines through, and then you may take another one, and you can kind of taste all of them all together. And it just makes for a, a complex and very interesting cigar. 
Um, if they were less than nine dollars and twenty-five cents a single, I'd be I'd be compelled to buy more of these things. I mean, they're, they're just a really good afternoon cigar. A little, you know, late morning, early afternoon with a cup of coffee. These go really well. They, I'm just I'm impressed. Uh, I still like the Timeless more, but uh, the 1930 is no slouch. It's uh, it's an impressive cigar, and I would strongly suggest you try one if you've got nine bucks to burn. So I think that's going to conclude the review. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you later. Happy smoking.